Built on ground reclaimed from alien vegetation, this modern pavilion is here to showcase art with a global appeal. The Norval family want to make art widely accessible to local and international visitors, students and school children alike. This time around you've incorporated art, food and landscaping. What is the synergy there? It's very important for us to give it like a full rounded experience. So when you come here, that you not only enjoy the platform, which is art, but you also enjoy the add-ons of the beautiful restaurant, there's a beautiful shop where you can go art-related um, branding and products. You can actually walk through the garden, have a picnic. For me, personal favorite, there's very good ice cream at our gelato shop. And there's all these add-ons, and I think that's when we know art doesn't stand on its own, it's part of us. And this is what we hope that people will enjoy here. For the opening, sculptor Serge Alain Nitigeka was commissioned to create this installation. Serge was displaced from Burundi as a boy, and much of his work deals with displacement and of human trafficking. And if we don't have a passport, it's difficult to negotiate our bodies. We right. end up in the back of trucks or on boats or as human cargo, so we have to negotiate our way through the space. So it is quite imposing, it's very complex, and he constructed it, and then he cut the path with a chainsaw. So it has this quite overpowering quality, it fills the space totally. Among three opening exhibitions are Rediscovery and Memory, with bronzes and drawings by Sidney Kumalo and Ezram Lechai, two major South African artists of the struggle era. Alongside these is an exhibit of works by Eduardo Villa. And then there is the sculptural garden, designed by Keith Kirsten and Raymond Hudson. How long did the design process take? Well, we've been on site here almost two years now. And we got on site and started making all the contours, bringing the water through on the actual main streamline where it is a naturally flowing through and, and then we worked on the plant palette for the place. So you've got all kinds of wetland plants down near the actual water right up to these beautiful flowering um, winter aloes and other plants that have made up the overall um, design. The other important thing is that we've also had to also introduce indigenous plants that are from this particular area in the main sculpture park. And on the buffer zones, we've been able to go into plants from other parts of indigenous plants of South Africa. So it's been a whole kind of research into that. And then Ray can tell you now about the leopard toads, because that's the most important thing on the site. Yeah, I actually believe that the landscape and the architecture help conserve the leopard toad. Yes, this is a very sensitive site, and it is the home to the northern leopard toad. This is its actual part of its breeding ground area, and they are migratory. So they would come and breed here and then move off again. But it's not the only fauna around here. We've got porcupines, which come out of the culverts, and they down on our arum lilies and all the other wonderful bulbs that we've got in the gardens. And I've just seen an African data on the river. So it's wonderful to see this influx of uh, wildlife. The architects had to include special culverts under the roads to allow the actual migration of the leopard toad down into the wetland and to continue their pathway even under the main road here. I love how you've created little pockets for all the statues. It gives it a beautiful aesthetic. Well, it is a sculpture park, so you've got sculptures throughout the garden, and then um, we've designed you know, actual hedges around some of the circular areas, berms, or to create a home for and a backdrop for the sculptures. The opening was a celebration of art's role in our vibrant society. The chosen exhibits recognize that today's artists stand on the shoulders of giants. Architect Derek Henstra's design suggests a gallery looking boldly to the future of art in our country. Derek, architecturally, how did you go about approaching this enormous task? Well, it's an enormous story, to be honest, um, but a very inspiring story. It's not very often that one gets to design an art gallery, and, and this really is an art pavilion, a modern-day art pavilion. The strong, positive emphasis on people in art is winning many fans. How gorgeous is this art destination, and it's in South Africa? This is world class. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to travel. You go to the Guggenheim, to the Prada Foundation, and you, uh, you come here and you go, wow, 
this is stunning. We've got incredible artists. And for Louis Norville, who I uh, met many years ago, this was a dream uh, come true. Um, we were here on Wednesday night for a preview. And tonight and today I've had the opportunity to walk through these gardens. It's just spectacular. Any new gallery is worth celebrating. But artists like Ati Patra Ruga know this one will be significant. How important is it to celebrate our heritage, particularly in South Africa? It's very important, without a question. I think that we're a country that has such a diversity of people and also a diversity in age that I feel that we do have a problem with communicating from you know, an inter intergenerational point of view. So I think that by having art, we have a record. Therefore, younger people can be able to go and look at previous uh, joys and some challenges that we've gone through. So it's communication. There's so much happening tonight. What would you say is your favorite space? The highlight for me is the room that we're in right now. Um, as a young art student learning about Eduardo Villa, Sydney Kumalo who's next door, Ezra Mlachaya who's also in the same space, and not really always being able to be in touch with the sculptures in a physical way has now changed. So being able to now experience so many of their works within the same space, I really can't even explain to you how really amazing it is for me at this moment. To encourage a love of art, the Norval Foundation Gallery offers free entrance to visitors younger than 18 and on Mondays anyone may visit for free.